Hi everyone, so I thought it would be a good idea to um, every now and then highlight some positive contributions of some Puerto Ricans that we don't really necessarily hear about. Um, so today I wanted to talk about the uh, Puerto Rican ears, okay, and they were a part of the uh, 65th Infantry of the U.S. Army, okay. So I'm just going to read off this New York Times article, excuse me, daily news article that I found on this group. So it starts off here. As Puerto Ricans and as Americans, the Borique, the Borigueniers Army Regiment continues to make history. Okay. Um, they bravely fought for their country and made history in the process. The 65th Infantry of the U.S. Army, known as the Borigueniers, have lived by their motto, honor et fidelitas, Latin for honor and fidelity, both on and off the battlefield for more than a hundred years. Activated in 1899, shortly after the U.S. took control over the former Spanish colony of Puerto Rico, the 65th Infantry Division began as a volunteer regiment composed of locals enlisted to safeguard the new territory. In 1908, Congress incorporated the unit into the Army as the first Hispanic segregated unit in U.S. military history. Okay. Named after Borinquen, the Taino name for Puerto Rico, the regiment bravely fought in both world wars. It was their role in the Korean War, in which more than 43,000 Puerto Ricans enlisted and 3,540 died, where the Borinquenier cemented their legacy as the pride of Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico and one of the best fighting units in Army history. It really was in Korea where they fought in combat and where they made their mark as warriors. Naomi Figueroa Solet, producer, director, and writer of the documentary The Bloody Guineers, told the Daily News. Earning themselves the nickname The Fire Brigade for extinguishing some of the war's worst blazes, the unit notably led the last American regimental bayonet assault charge during the Korean War. I'm proud to be a veteran, said Irvin. Machado, 86, of New Jersey. Machado said he was 19 when he and his brother were drafted. He said he and his brother served separately, but both on the front lines. We did what we had to do, Machado said. Thank the almighty God we went back to Puerto Rico in one piece. We went through a lot, but as Puerto Ricans, as American citizens, we did what we had to do. There was no question about it. The Distinguished Latino Regiment also braved attacks on another front. According to the Borinquenier's website, the men were discriminated against and humiliated. They were forced to shave their mustaches until such a, a time as they gave proof of their manhood. Wow. Borinquenier's also had to shower in facilities that were separate from non-Hispanics. They were forbidden from speaking Spanish and from eating rations of rice and beans. They were even made to wear signs saying, I am a coward, according to borinquenears.org. They look past the ignorance, and to this day, they feel pride in their uniquely Puerto Rican regiment. The legacy wouldn't die, Figueroa said. All the armed forces were integrated. It still exists. Also today, in the aftermath of the worst natural disaster Puerto Rico has ever seen, the 1st Battalion of the 65th Infantry Regiment has stayed true to the, Borinquen to the Borinquenier's maxim, assisting in Hurricane Maria relief effort as part of the National Guard. We need these heroes. We need to remind the American public about our Puerto Rican military heroes and that we are U.S. citizens and that many have volunteered and many who were drafted did their duty and won and many did not come back, and that they continue to serve today, Figueroa said. In June 2014, the Revere Latino Unit, which earned 10 Distinguished serv Service Crosses, about 250 Silver Stars, more than 600 Bronze Stars, and nearly 3,000 Purple Hearts, was at last given its due. President Barack Obama awarded the, the regiment 
Congressional gold medal. <laughs> Sorry, you hear my cat in the background. He's in one of his crazy moods. <laughs> in World War One, they defended the homeland and patrolled the Panama Canal Zone. In World War Two, they fought in Europe. In Korea, they fought in mud, mud, snow, Obama said at the cer- ceremony. Segregation set them apart from their fellow soldiers, but their courage made them legendary. On September 17, Figueroa traveled to South Korea with 15 U.S. military veterans, 13 of them Borigeneers, through the Revisit Korea program. The South Korean Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs created the program to honor Korean War veterans from 21 U.N. allied nations. They left it devastated with a lot of poverty after the war, which is why many Puerto Ricans sympathize with the Koreans because they came from a poor island, Figueroa said. They wanted to see how the country had changed, and it has changed tremendously. The American heroes were honored with medals at a gala event for their heroic contributions and successes. They were determined to go back. God bless them, Figueroa said. Vincente Arroyo, 84, of Jersey City, New Jersey, said he saw very little combat in the Korean War. Instead, running on um, reconnaissance missions and performing intelligence tasks. When Arroyo returned to South Korea for the first time, more than 60 years, he was surprised. The first time I was there, it was so destroyed, said native Ponce Port said the native of Ponce, Puerto Rico. All has changed. The streets are clean. The people were very humble and thankful for the Puerto ears. They gave us a medal that says, Welcome Heroes. Korea has been changing, excuse me, Korea has been changing significantly, Arroyo added. There are so many skyscrapers in Seoul. It looks like New York. Freedom was like here, and they appreciate us so much for it. They kept bowing to us. So... I thought this was very interesting, and I figured um, this would be a good group to highlight. I'll probably try to do things like this, you know, maybe once a month or so, maybe even more than that. Um, But for now, I will see you guys in the next video. I hope that you enjoyed this little piece of brief history. I'm going to leave links to other articles about um, the Borinquen years in the description box. If you're curious about learning more, because there's a lot. It's just that some of these articles were very long, way too long to read in a video. All right. So again, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.